where they make their mistake is when you're studying the scripture, especially in the Hebrew, in Hebrew, or in the language of Jesus, which is Galilean, what happens is words get very tricky. These new translations of Bible put together by Romans and Greeks was done purposely so that the word would get lost. The whole foundation was based on the word, keeping the word of Christ from God as a manifestation of invisible God in flesh, you know, made flesh. And he makes it clear in St. John when he said the word was made flesh, when it said the word kalimato sara, and then he says basharim. The word sara comes from the word um, yasiru, to the same word he used to fashion something. So it gives the impression that Christ was just not a, a happenstance, but of a process of him becoming who and what he is. So you get your law out of Christ. And what Paul and them set out to do was they hated Christ. The reason why they hated Christ is because Christ was a nigger. That really bothered them that the Romans and the Greeks of his time couldn't stand him. Paul was a mulatto. And mulattoes have a thing against dark-skinned black people. And that's not from not just 2,000 years ago. That's going on today in the black race. We, like that movie that brother made. School days is really true. We know that goes on within our own race. And so the disciples of Jesus that were very extremely dark was Simon, John, James. Mm -hmm. These are the ones that were very dark skinned. Then you had others that were mixed like Matthews and a, another guy who lived in the land of Canaan, whose family mixed in with the Canaanites, another Simon, right? And so there was a conflict going on right inside there. And so by the time the doctrine switched into the hands of the Romans, under Constantine, you gotta understand Constantine was the son of Helen. And that's what people don't understand. That 90% of the Christianity being taught today is Hellenism. He was introducing his mother as a mother goddess in there and trying to replace her with Mary. And if he, if he could replace Mary with his mother Helen for Hellenism, then of course as the son of Mary, he becomes a traditional God, God and could then win back all the people of they lost the people of Galilee and they lost the people of Judea they lost certain people they couldn't control those people who lived on the outskirts and to the point where even a, a group of zealots very uh, very fanatical black people broke away from the Maccabean and went up into the mountains of Jordan and set up the Qumran society those are all blacks up there and that's why the Romans they call it Masada that's why the Romans went out there and massacred them. The same way they massacred these people in Weeksville. The, the, the Essian society that, that recorded the Qumran tablets were all Negroes. They had, a, they had a certain amount of restriction. That's what he's reading there when you're asking that question about Gentiles and Gentiles and the temple and the temple. It's like a kind of reminder of what's taking place here. That even in that book in Revelations chapter 21, we're all the way back to the book of Ezra again, where they're deciding genetically who can get in. Whenever they bring up the word Gentile, you're splitting genes right away. Right. Gentile is, I don't mean because Gentile sounds like genes. Tomorrow, because in the Hebrew word goyim, and when we refer to our nation in Hebrew, we call ourselves Am. Am was the blacks. Goyims were anybody, anybody who was not pure black, who couldn't say, I am from this tribe, from this tribe, my mother's from this tribe, and my father. When they confront, when the priest confronted you, they asked you, who was your father? And, and who was your father's wife? And your father named his wives. If he had five wives or four wives, whatever the case, then they want to know what your mother, what tribe was your mother from? That's why they say stuff like Elijah the test bite. Mm. They point out tribe. What tribe are you from? What tribe was your mother from? What tribe was your mother from? Even to the sin to the father, because the sin is, is mixing your seed with the wrong people according to the Bible in Ezra. The sin to the father falls upon the son, even to the fourth generation. generation. Four generations genetically is when your genes are totally destroyed. So they would ask you, who is your daddy? Who is your daddy's daddy? And who is your daddy's daddy's daddy? And they want to know four generations back. Back then, people bear the title Ben or Bar. Ben, if there was Ben, then they were from the Galilean, or which they became modern Arabic. If they were Bar, they were from the Aramic, which was Hebrew. And that, okay, that said something. Okay, you're either... From that side of the dialect, the Ashura people, 
or he was from that side of the dialect, which was the Aramite people. Okay, so either Semitic or Aramite, that, that covered a whole lot of people. Akkadians, Chaldeans, all those were niggas. Now, how did the Phoenicians get in, and how did the Greeks get in, and how did the so-and-so get in? The moment they got in their jeans, and they asked you, well, who are you? And you said, I'm Yahuda Ben David. They said, okay, you're Judah, son of David. And then you say, well, I'm, and your mother, and you say, well, my mother was Iris, daughter of Aquila of the tribe of the Canaanites. They said, step back. It's fine. It's fine. You got to step back. You are, and you're, you are one generation destroyed. And believe it or not, us as Native Americans still do it today. It's fine. They want to know what percentage of you is still in Native American. And the United States government acknowledges it and has it on their records that you are this much of a nigga. Because he said it about black folks a long time ago, that black people are this much human and this percentage not human. Remember that? Mm -hmm. Three-fifths of a human being. Still so that there. means they got this practice of percentage from the Bible. So when you get from Ezra, when they're trying to put the, find out the pure blood and get the, the genes ready for Judah so that the Shiloh could be born, the Savior had to be born in an unblemished robe. I mean, a, a pure gene traveling from Judah down from Philiz all the way down to him. He had to be pure. He couldn't have no venom of the serpent in his blood. You follow what I'm trying to say? So the blood had to be pure. I think uh, my daughter pointed out, my sister pointed out a movie to me to tell me to watch called Dracula 2000. How many people saw it? Because I haven't seen it yet. She just gave it to me. It is all about. Jesus' blood, the tribe of Judah, and the, and the vampire wanting to, take, the blood for the to get, take, us, us take our blood and mix his blood in it. Something, yeah. something like that. I'll watch it and find out. I don't like movies like that. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he might have a message in it. But you understand what I'm saying? So it's, it's, you don't realize the whole story of the blood of Christ is deeper than the Romans and the Greeks are teaching you. Because when you say the blood of Christ in, um, I got to step over here for a minute. When you say, oh, you're at large, huh? <laughs> <laughs> the catch word is this word here. Write it down if you can. Comes the same in this language. This is Aramic, and this is Galilean, right? Or with the modern day uh, Indian stole and called Arabic. There's no such merely language. This word equals the word blood. This word equals the word blood. You understand? In Aramic, we add this onto it, which is an olive, and it changes to this. In Galilean, we add this on it, same vowels too. And it becomes this. You see that? Simply meaning the word blood comes from the root word damn. And the word Adam comes from that root word damn. There was a concentrated effort on the part of a reptilian creature that we refer to in the Bible as Nahash in Hebrew or the serpent to get his blood. I'm trying to get this across to y'all into your blood because what comes in your blood with his blood is all of his diseases and four generations and you get confused about how the devil can have four generations until you go to Isaiah 14 12 right. how art thou fallen from heaven O Lucifer this is what I talked about last week and it speaks about the being who tried to get on the throne of God but how he was fallen Neph in the language is nephela, nephela, to fall down. The same ones they call Nephilians in Genesis chapter 6. How are, how are thou nephela, how are thou fallen what? From heaven. From Shemarim. O, o Lucifer. O, what? What is his name? Lucifer. Helal. Helal. A very tricky word in Hebrew because people don't hear what it, what it means. Helad. 
Now, in Arabic, the same word, or galayim, becomes helal. Today, this word means crescent. Crescent moon. Helal. You understand? So, Lucifer is called the crescent moon. Yet, they translate it as he who holds the torch. You know why? Because a torch is non-luminous until it is lit. And the helal moon is non-luminous until it gets the light of the sun. So they have you looking at Lucifer and missing his fall. Mm. You understand? They have you looking at the son of the devil, wrestling against the son of the devil, trying to assure the son of the devil while the devil walks right on it. Because right. you once, once you read it again, you'll see the difference. Go ahead. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Halal, son of, Shakar. of the morning? Shakar. The word they have here is Shakar, son of the morning. morning. If they change that and translate it to morning, you may not realize that it said, How art thou fallen, Halal? Ben Shakar and you won't know who the devil Shakar is and you'll be running around like most churches warring against Lucifer and can't stop the father the way they have you and I thinking that there's a war going on between Lucifer and the heavenly father when the war is between Lucifer and Christ son against son you follow what I'm saying so he, by deception, gets into your dam. Dam, that's bad, ain't it? Hmm. See how it sounds? And they call it being damned. Being when damned. he taps into your bloodline and puts his venom in you, and in that came all of the diseases. For instance, AIDS would never be in our bloodline. It wasn't there. Something they create and they inject in us. Half of us getting sicknesses when we go to hospitals. That's when they put them in us. But that's just one way. Then sexual contact with them, sweating with them, breathing with them. We exchange there because we breathe in as they're breathing out. So they're constantly, that's why they're always up in your face. That's right. They're trying to breathe. <laughs> Caucasians have this thing where they got to talk to you from over here like this. They're trying to get you up. You find yourself backing off. Right. Like, yeah, but the moistness is coming from your lungs and going out. As you breathe, you know, you're giving off. Carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide that's coming from the oxygen inside. Fusing. So you're sharing your essence. And that's why they get up in your face. That's why they do that with dogs also. Because they share the same spirit. Right? So what happens is they're trying to get in your blood to destroy you. And that's why we go back to the importance of whether it's in the book of Revelations where we're being told by Yeshua that we should gather together right. 144,000 to prepare. Y'all kept everything down here. That's one group of people. There's no word rapture in the Bible, but the word snatching away, pickpocketing, or taking up, is in the Bible. There will be a first group of people taken out of here to reign with Christ a thousand years before the 144,000 are met here. After they wash their robe, when they say wash your robe in the blood of lamb, you know what that's the same thing is? Pick up your cross. Follow me. And follow me. So the problem comes in that most blacks in the world today, and especially in Christianity, are not following Christ. They're following Paul and Paul's disciples. And one thing he read there was he started reading about the floor plan of the new tabernacle. Right? And one of the things he read was on the door were the twelve The names of the twelve the tribes. The 12, no, not the twelve tribes. The twelve names of the twelve disciples Those of the Lamb. Right, the apostles of Christ of, and the Lamb, right? That's right, 14. Paul 1 to 12? No. no. So his name, is his name going to be there? No. So why are they listening to him? Hmm. <laughs> that's right. Paul's name is not on that door. That's and that's when right. the disciples had to get together after Judas was taken out, they had to elect a new person, that's and right. it was Basaba. They replaced Judas with a man called Basaba, and he made the 12 again. So then Judas is not in there, and Paul, Paul is not in there. Yet the church, and the blacks in particular, are being led to believe that Paul is of some assistance to us. When Paul was working with the Romans and the Greeks, 
Paul established the name Christianity. Jesus would not know what Christianity is. Jesus would not know what the word Jesus is. If you walked up to Jesus and said Jesus, he would not even know who you're talking about. Because he would only speak to you in one or two languages, Aramaic or Galilean. And if neither one of those, like one is Yeshua and the other is Yeshua. They're very close, but they're not the same. I mean, it's the same word, but their dialects are the same language. But he would not even know what you mean by Jesus. And it's going to be a struggle, a hard struggle. Our task as Christians is going to be to de-Christianize the tribe of Judah and bring them back to their glory. And they don't want the glory. Because as I said many times, what comes with that glory is responsibility. That's right. And they don't want to have to respond, even though they have the ability to do it. You don't want to have to keep the law. It's so much easier not to keep the law. Not to keep today is what? The Sabbath. And today, at, at uh, 19 minutes before sunset, Shabbat went out. That's right. And it came in Friday night. That's right. And but we've been spoiled by the delicacies of the holiday to live in her world deliciously, so we won't make time to keep that Shabbat. We won't keep Bereth Miller. We won't keep Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, Pesach, or Fisak, the, all the laws that we're supposed to keep. And that's why we're doing so bad. That's right. We're supposed to be worshiping the God of our father, Abraham, Isaac, and, and Jacob. Jacob. It takes us straight on down to Jesus. I'm mean, happy to use Jesus so you know what I'm talking about. And we refuse to do that because that's a heavy burden. That's a responsibility. Yet, we want to go to heaven. <laughs> we don't want to, the, the burden of following the law of God, but we want God to give us entrance into heaven. And he says, well, this is what I want you to do. I want you to follow the religion of your fathers. Jacob, Isaac, and Abraham. And you say, I don't want to do that. I want to follow Paul, Titus, and Cyrene. I like the word Christian. Well, when, was I, when were you first called Christians? While Jesus was here or after Jesus was gone? When Jesus was gone. According to the Bible in the books of Acts, right? You were first called Christian. In Antioch. When Jesus was gone, by who? By the people of Antioch. They used the word Christian? No. Because the people of Antioch, if you look it up, you'll find out is Syrian. They were Syrian. So now what name were they using? Because they didn't use the word Christos because Christos is Latin and they wasn't speaking Latin in Syria or Antioch at the time. It wasn't Greek, which is the same word. They used the same word Christos. They grafted it from the Romans. So what were they calling them? They were calling them Kisis. You know what it meant? Recluse or monks. Because when they saw these guys coming from Jerusalem and they were living in Rome, where people wore armor and clothes of leather and things. These men wore cloaks, robes. The so-called followers of Jesus wore simple white robes, according to the Bible. They looked like if you and I saw a person walking down the street, like a monk. So they called him Kisis, which means monk or recluse or something. And they did it as a joke. You know, like, look at the monks. And they went and the name stuck the same way the name Hebrew is a fake name. The name Hebrew in the Bible is from Ebar. Right? Ebar. The word is Ivrit. Ivrit. And what they did is they saw Abraham's family cross the Tigris Euphrates Valley. And they said, the hard Ivrit. Look at the, or behold the people who crossed over. And depending, here's the deep part, depending on the authority of the person speaking, it determines whether or not the name stuck. Here's a perfect example. Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea. But he was raised in Nazareth. So they put on the cross, Nazareth. <laughs> not, you know, they didn't want to put Galilean because they wanted to make it look like a mock because they had a quote in here that says, well, he went to Nazareth so that the prophecy could be filled to try to make him look like a phone. That he would become out of Nazareth. The prophet did not say Jesus would be born in Nazareth. It said he would come out of Nazareth. 
And then, you know what I'm saying? He was born and had to be born in Bethlehem of Judea because it said, The scepter should not depart from his feet, nor the lawgiver from Judah until Shiloh comes. So wherever the tribe of Judah lived, that's where he would have to be born. The prophecy 10. was clear. They want to distort it. They want to put questions because they don't want you to find out the part you play in this thing and how the puzzle must be put back together before the end times. And now we have million dollar preachers, Caucasians, who advocate Gentileism and have black preachers thinking they're Gentiles. That's right. That's right. That's right. Thinking that Paul got them in. When Paul was chased away by you, Paul didn't want to go nowhere near the book of Revelation. He didn't want to go nowhere near John, son of Zebedee. He didn't want to go nowhere near Jesus' brother James or Jose. He wouldn't touch them. He wanted to stay around people who were questionable like Timothy. Peter. Peter. He had his friends who he socialized with, who listened to him. And as you read their books, their books take away the glory of Christ. By the French, well, sometimes they say stuff like, uh, the man Jesus. You know what I'm saying? That's subtle. It's in there. He's a spiritualist. He's the son of God. So and so and so. That man, Jesus. So what he does, so what they do is reinstill he's merely a mortal in your mind instead of a God. But the Bible clearly says that Jesus is only called Lord by way of the Holy Ghost. Only called Lord by way of that Holy Ghost. The fact that he has that divine spark in him because he was in the beginning with God. With God. And as I explained last week, with God would be as God and then when he separates from God as the Ruhu or the spirit of God that hovers above the waters, the waters you'll find the same thing the Quran says Allah created the heavens and the earth in six days and then he takes and puts his throne upon the waters but when you look at it in Arabic it says it don't have the word throne because the word throne will be kursi chair seat and that's found in the second chapter, the 255th verse, where it says the throne of God. And all Arabs translated that. But when it comes to that word, Arush, this word, Ain Rashin, we did it again. Everybody, that white one. You got all that? <laughs> When you, when you come to this word here, write it down so you know it. <coughs> you see that? Ayn Rashi comes out in Hebrew to be the same thing. Right? Arush. All the lexicon, all the scholars will tell you, we have no idea what that word really means. So they just put it in the Quran as throne. Of course, it had God next to it. <laughs> you see? And they put it in the Torah as couch, seat. Because they had you know what, the same philosophy. But the word doesn't have a meaning because it implies the embodiment of a portion of God that stops somewhere and settles. And that is confusing the heck out of the theologians. They can't imagine how a portion of God could go somewhere and stop. Because Genesis chapter 1, verse 2, tells them it, but they can't see it. It says it in there. What? And the earth was without form. form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God did what? moved upon the face of the waters. So, and God created the heaven and the earth and set his throne upon the waters. The Spirit of God hovered above the waters. waters. Not God. That didn't say God hovered above the waters. Read it again. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. See, God didn't leave heaven and come and sit on the waters. God sent His Spirit, spirit which is Jesus. You see that? His soul, Ru'ah. His soul went to survey the earth and hover above the waters. And the Quran is saying the same thing. That He set His Arush over the waters. And then it goes on to talk about the creation of man and how he went from a sperm to a, an embryo to a... It goes on, right? The Quran explains it. 
and it does it right there. They're trying to prevent you from knowing this. They don't want you to hear the science of it. They don't want you to get into the depth of it because when you reject Paul and accept Christ and have nobody between God, you, and Christ, that's the end of their philosophy. That's right. But Christ said it very clear. Listen, he said, I am the way. Don't go with me because I'm a loser. I am the way. Me is Paul. The truth and the life. Nobody gets to the Father except from me to Paul and then to God. Ain't that what he said? No, no that's not what he said. <laughs> but, it, but isn't that what they're preaching? That's right. They're preaching and their preaching is being accepted. Because they've got so much money. And there's, there's these television programs got billions of dollars wrapped up in them. And their technology and the screen and that. You know, every now and then a little, a little white Jesus walk by and give you a little flashback of, you know, and it's so well thought out that when you're called to a group of people with the spirit, God is calling you because you know the truth. You think they're there to save you. <laughs> All you people being saved. But no, you got the truth and you're there to save them. <laughs> when you meet a, Christ, a group of Christians, they're saying, I'm going to pray for you. You're saying, thank you, pray for me and I'm going to save you. When you finish praying for me, then I got to tell you the truth of God. And you tell you the truth of the word of God. And tell you the truth of the kingdom of God. And tell you the truth of the children of God. Because Jesus said, I came to my own. However, but as many of them that do receive me, to them I give power to become sons of God. Did he say I give the power to become my sons? No. Is he trying to take God's authority? No. No, he said, if you believe on me, even if you didn't see me, I give you the power to get back in God's family. Gentiles can't do that. Because Gentiles are going to Christ. And Christ is taking us directly to the Father. He's saying, if you believe in me, you got the connection. You are my heirs, and I'm heir to God. And I put you in the kingdom of God. Because of the blood of God. Christ. Don't go for the spooky Catholic blood of Christ thing. Go for the blood of Christ. And realize what they mean. That Jesus' blood you understand that? It's pure. It's magic. <laughs> and that you are his seed. You are heirs to the kingdom of God through the blood that's in your veins as the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Not the goat. Not the ram but the sheep and the lamb and Jesus said I send you out as sheep among wolves lambs and wolves have the same thing fur I'm sorry uh, wolves and rams have the th same thing fur lambs and sheep have the same thing afros he's telling you genetically he describes you genetically by skin color by hair texture he described you by eyes and by blood and seed. Back in Genesis chapter uh, 3 verse 15. He went seed right there. Went into the seed of the devil and the seed of Eve. Why? Because the dam didn't mean anything anymore. You know why? Because the seed had got corrupt through Cain. And the devil was in our genes. You follow that? And down from Cain to his seed. So it's no longer about Adam or Dam. It became Eve and Seth. And when you open that Bible, I was just saying this tonight. When you open that Bible in English and you look at it in the beginning, you're getting lied to. The first word in there means, literally, Seth is the head of all things. It uses the word in there, Ra Shish. The word ra in Hebrew means the head. And the word shish is the name in Hebrew for set. Someone to replace someone else. Because God has given me another seed instead of Abel and Seth. The word in Hebrew is rashi. They, don't ne they never expected you to be back in your own language. They never expected you to be, to be able to look in the scripture and see the way it was given to you. They expect you to listen to the English read English Bibles and jump around the church and hump it all and because of the power we have